I am going to show you guys how a red blood cell travels through the heart. Okay, first I start as a deoxygenated red blood cell at the inferior vena cava or superior vena cava. Both uh, veins are draining the body of the deoxygenated blood. The inferior vena cava takes care of everything below the heart, and the superior takes care of everything above the heart. After we move out of the vena cavas, we come into the right atrium, the first of the four chambers of the heart. This is on the right side, or left to you guys, but for me, the right side, and it is relatively small. It is essentially a collection chamber for all the blood, uh, ready to pump it into the next station. Okay, so what do you do in your house? Every time you leave a room, you go through a door. Same thing in the heart. So first you come to the tricuspid valve. This is a one-way door that only lets blood to the next station. It has three parts, it's hence its name, and then we can continue on to the next stop. Okay, so after we go through the door, we come to the right ventricle. Again, on the right side, but slightly bigger. The ventricle is the main pumping station. It actively takes in the blood and then shooms it out to the next stop. Okay, every time you leave a room, you have to go through a door. Again, so here we have our next door, the pulmonary valve. This is another one-way valve that goes from the right ventricle on to the next stop. Okay, so we have now left the right side of the heart. But explain to me what amazing physics feat can take the blood from the heart to the lungs. It's called the pulmonary artery. So this is the only artery in the entire body that does not carry oxygenated blood. By definition, an artery leaves the heart and goes to other places. But this pulmonary artery takes deoxygenated blood, me, to the lungs to get oxygenated. Okay, so everybody knows where the lungs are and what they do. Lungs are where red blood cells exchange their carbon dioxide load for oxygen. However, one thing in this diagram must be pointed out. We have our pulmonary artery right there, but in real life, it goes back up around the heart, as our red blood cell will demonstrate, up to the lungs. For demonstration purposes, we were not able to do this, and so I just put it as a branch down there. But in reality, it goes up around the heart and branches off into the lungs. Now to finish the lungs, our lovely little red blood cell has oxygenated herself and will continue on throughout the heart. Back from the lungs, blood enters through the pulmonary veins, the only veins in the body that carry oxygenated blood. Remember, the definition of an artery is something that carries blood away from the heart, and the definition of a vein is something that carries blood to the heart. So the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary vein are the only two that are switched and now it can enter the heart. Just like the right atrium, the left atrium is a collecting house for blood. When it comes back through the pulmonary veins from the lungs, it can sit here until our next stop pushes it along. Okay, whenever you leave a room, you must go through a door. So now we go through our mitral valve. The mitral valve is yet another one-way valve, directing blood from our last stop onwards. We are in the largest section of the heart, the left ventricle. Because of this, your heart is a little lopsided. This is the main pumping force that delivers blood all over the body. Now we are in the last door of the heart, the aortic valve. The aortic valve is yet another one-way valve, and it separates the left ventricle from the aorta. Okay, we have come to our last stop within the heart, the aorta, an artery that leaves the heart and goes to a number of other places within the body. For demonstration purposes, we are not able to draw it as it truly is, because remember, the pulmonary artery leaves the heart and arches over it. In reality, the aorta arches over that, before that arches over the heart. So we have just have to draw it as this simple diagram. Of course, that isn't the end of it. This artery loops up to the heart, branches three times, and then heads back down to the rest of the body. There are three separate branches, one that goes to the uh, left arm, one that goes up the left side of the neck, and then the third one is bigger, and it branches into one that goes up the right side of the neck and down the right arm. Interesting aspects about the heart. The first that we shall talk about is the foramen ovale, a hole in the wall of the heart. Our little red, red blood cell will now demonstrate what it does. The foramen ovale is used when a, a, a baby is in the uterus, and it has no need for the lungs. It saves time by completely bypassing the lungs and allowing the blood to continue on its way. 
final part of the baby's heart that is in use in the uterus is the ductus arteriosus, signified by this little bit of yellow tape. Our little red blood cell will now demonstrate what it does. Because the baby is still in the uterus and not using its lungs, it only has about 5% of the blood going through that way, but it still doesn't need to go through the lungs. So the little bit of 5% of blood that escapes going through the other valve continues on through this way. Also, it helps to develop the heart, because if no blood gets to the heart, it probably won't develop properly. and stop. Uh, stop, we gotta do it again. So we have now left the main portion of the heart. <laughs> okay, so everybody knows where the lungs are and what they do. It's where blood, red blood cells exchange oxygen for oxygen. There is one more interesting, I have a little bit of yellow tape right here. Our little red blood cell will now demonstrate what it does. When a baby is in the U, I said, our little red blood cell will now demonstrate what it does.